Inkling is one of the most interesting newcomers in Smash Ultimate. A lot of their moveset is very true to their Source game Splatoon, such as their use of weapons like the Splatter Shot, Roller, and Splat Bombs. However, one of the more interesting parts of Inkling's kit is their general movement abilities. Part of what makes Splatoon so much fun is the dynamic between being able to shoot in human form and then quickly traveling around the map in squid form. And despite not being a shooter game in the slightest, Inkling's movement is actually transferred very well into Smash Ultimate. Inkling has some of the strongest and most intricate movement options in the game, and it's essential to master moving around the stages Inkling to use a character at a high level. Today I'm going to be explaining how to utilize all of the Inkling's movement options in Smash Ultimate to their fullest potential. Let's get started with the basics, running. While Inkling is only the 20 second fastest character, his dash is bar none the best in the game. This is because of some of the attributes that it has. In order to explain what makes Inkling's dash so good, I'm going to have to break down how running works in Smash Ultimate. When you input a dash, you can run for as long as you want, provided there is enough stage for you to run on. However, there is a minimum amount of time that you can dash before you are able to cancel it into certain actions. This is called a foxtrot, and it's very important to move you around with not just Inkling, but almost every other character in the game. When you foxtrot, the only actions that you can perform before you start a regular run are jumping, turning around in the first 6 frames of the foxtrot, which is how you dash dance, or inputting a dash attack on the first frame of the dash. Once you reach the end of your foxtrot, you can do whatever input you like, and you can act whenever you want out of your dash. This might make foxtrotting sound a bit limiting, however it actually gives you a ton of unique ground and movement options. Foxtrotting might sound Camille, but Inklings actually only lasts 14 frames, which is very quick and not that much of a commitment. Additionally, the reason why you'd want to foxtrot instead of running is that when you turn around while running, you have to go through a somewhat slow turnaround animation even if you briefly stop your dash. However, after a foxtrot, you can instantly foxtrot in the other direction, giving you more ambiguous movement. Plus, Inkling does this little hop animation at frame 14 of his dash which makes his hurtbox go higher, which is coincidentally the exact frame that his foxtrot ends, meaning that it's generally better if just to foxtrot if you're trying to low profile things. Despite this, running isn't entirely useless, as since you can run for however long as you want, you can mix up how far you move unlike with foxtrotting. However, keep in mind that you can't quickly turn around out of a dash, so if you want to go the other way, you have to foxtrot in the same direction again and then dash the other way. This is essentially the basis of extended dash dancing for all characters in Smash Ultimate, however this is where I should get into why Inkling specifically gets a lot of benefit from this movement. The reason why Inkling has the best dash in the game is because he transforms into his squid form on, from frame 3 to 11 of his foxtrot. This makes Inkling a lot smaller for a few frames and reduces his hurtbox as well. Because of this, Inkling is really hard to hit during this part of his dash and you can avoid quite a few projectiles and attacks this way. <laughs> Combine this with his speed and Inkling already has some of the best movement in the game. Dashing around everywhere is very ambiguous and makes it really hard to tell where Inkling is going to go and what he's going to do. A big part of Inkling's neutral is dashing in now of your opponent's range to bail attacks and then whiff punishing them. This requires a lot of knowledge of your opponent's active hitbox range to do consistently, however I'll walk you through an example. Ike players really like to constantly throw out neutral air and for good reason. It's quick, really big, auto cancels out of a short hop, is safe on shield, and leads into a ton of other combos and kill confirms. Thankfully for Inkling, you're able to dash under it and punish Ike. To exploit this, you can dash in and out of the range of Ike's neutral air to bait him into using it, and once he pulls the trigger, dash in to punish him or run under the active hitbox and punish him from the other side. As another example, suppose you're fighting Wolf and he's camping you with his blaster. If you time it right, you can dash under the shot to close up the distance between you and him and punish him in his end lag. Now you might be thinking, well this is cool and all, but what should I do after I whiff something? Well to answer the question, we have to consider what Inkling's main neutral objectives are. Inkling's main mechanic is his ink, which increases the damage that your opponent takes. Because of this, it should be your priority to ink your opponents and then land damaging combos to do massive amounts of percent to your opponent. Your two best tools for this are grab and jab since they're his safest moves for inking opponents and as such, they're your highest priority attacks to hit. Both are pretty safe and can be done out of a dash. Generally, it's easier to find openings for a grab since it is a bit safer than the jab, however multi-jab does more damage and puts more ink on your opponent. Thankfully, at low percents you have a couple useful openings into these moves. At very low percents against some characters, you are able to land a down throw onto multi-jabs. Once you get past about 15%, however, you have to start going for forward throw as the combo stops working. You can also combo into jab or grab with landing nair, bear, or fair. Some other good mix-up options out of dash dancing are turnaround, cancel, pivot, forward tilt. This might sound really complicated, but essentially you're just turning around after a dash, then doing forward tilt in the opposite direction to do a small slide forwards while attacking. This is a really good zone breaking tool that's decently safe and hits fairly far. Alternatively, you can just do dash attack to break through your opponent's zone, but keep in mind that your opponent can punish you for this. Down tilt, while being somewhat punishable, can actually be a useful burst option too, especially due to the angle that it launches at, allowing for potential follow-ups and tech chases. Dash to shield is also a good defensive option if you just want to play a bit slower. You can basically do whatever you want, however these moves are the safest and best from what I've used with the character. 
Another thing they also haven't gone over yet is rolling, which can actually be a very solid movement option for Inkling despite being kind of punishable. Inkling's roll looks a lot like his dash, so you can mix in rolls to evade attacks while still keeping your movement hard to read. Another very good option out of a dash is jumping, which you've probably noticed I haven't really discussed at all up until this point. This is because I wanted to go over pretty much all of the ground options that you have before getting into your aerial game. Inkling's air game is fairly strong, since despite not having great range on his aerials, his combos and fantastic airspeed more than make up for it. Inkling, as well as every other character in the game, has a 3 frame jump squat. Inkling specifically, however, stays in the air for 40 frames during a short hop and 52 frames during a full hop, or just under a second. These times are without fast falling, and while Inkling isn't the fastest faller, you can get down from the air pretty quickly. This allows you to do lots of useful things, most notably quickly pressuring your opponent with safe aerials such as back air and forward air. Doing this is really useful as it conditions your opponent to shield whenever you're in the air, or else as mentioned before, they'll be taking a lot of damage and getting inked. Knowing this, you can punish your opponent's shield with tomahawk grabs which will also lead into ink or damaging combos off of down throw. Another really good use of jumping is that you can avoid grounded attacks and punish, since every character's jump squad in this game is so small. Keep in mind though that jumping is a commitment and many newer Smash players don't realize this. Once you're in the air, you can only go down, and even if you jump again, you're eventually going to have to land. This can put you in a fairly vulnerable spot, especially since most characters in this game don't have great disadvantage states. As a side note, Inkling benefits a lot from attack cancels, as they can allow him to extend combos and pressure opponents with aerials in more unique ways. I suggest watching my Smash Corners video on it, since it's a bit too complicated to go over all the details within this video. However, make note that retreating and instant reverse cancel back airs are really good and should definitely be implemented into your aerial pressure game. Lastly, let's end the video with some ways that you can use specials for mobility. The most obvious example of this is Roller, as it's basically a unique movement tool. We all know how powerful Roller can be when it lands, however it is a bit unsafe to throw out a neutral. However, utilizing your movement from before, you can create good openings to land Roller and get a free kill. One of my favorite things to do is Fox drop backwards to make my opponent think I'm retreating and elicit aggressive movement from them, and then Roller towards them to catch them off guard. Roller is also phenomenal for tech chasing due to its insane reward and relative safety. Keep in mind that you can cancel Roller by either pressing Z to stay on the ground or by jumping into whatever you want. While Roller is unsafe on block, you have lots of different ways to move out of it, so make sure you mix up how you escape getting blocked. Splat Bombs, while being less synonymous with movement as Roller, actually have some cool mobility tricks. If you press backwards before a special, you can do it in the opposite direction while maintaining your momentum. This is called a turnaround special. However, if you input your special and then turn around right after, you can be reverse the special. This basically lets you transfer all of your existing aerial momentum from one direction into the other while using your special. You can do this with all specials, however it works the best with projectiles, which is why I brought up Splat Bombs. Aerial B Reverse Splat Bombs can be a really good way to pressure your opponents and mix up your movement. It's a really good mix-up option that's very useful to learn. Also, you can combine turnaround specials with B Reverse and do something called a Wave Bounce, where you basically reverse your momentum with a special while facing the same direction. However, it's kind of tricky to do, so make sure you practice it before taking it into a match. Thank you all for watching. I've been a bit too busy playing Ultimate and dealing with finals to make videos recently, however in the coming year we'll try to upload more frequently and make lots of tech videos for Ultimate. I still mean Pac-Man, so I'll definitely be making more content for him, but there are lots of other characters I enjoy using that I'll definitely be making videos for as well. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Ultimate videos. Also make sure to comment any text that you think I should make into a video. As always, I'll see you all next time.